It's time to take you through this week in Nichols Athletics as we bring you the best of Colonel Sports from Nichols State University. This week in Nichols Athletics is presented by State Farm Insurance. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state with State Farm Insurance. Welcome to This Week in Nichols Athletics, presented by State Farm Insurance. I'm your host, Mike Wagenheim. Coming up on today's program, we'll hit the links with the Colonel's golf team and look back on some recent action on the diamond. We'll start, though, with Colonel's hoops. The Nichols men's basketball team went into last Saturday's matchup against East Division leading McNeese without their heart and soul. Dantrell Thomas broke his nose in last Wednesday's win against Central Arkansas. He had surgery the next day and was forced to sit this one out. Now, most folks would have written Nichols off in this one. The players, though, wouldn't be among that group. Burton Coliseum, Lake Charles, Louisiana, senior day for the Cowboys. They honored their four seniors, including the Southland Conference's leading scorer, Patrick Richard. Ugly, ugly first half here. McNeese in transition. Richard, so dangerous with the ball, drives across the paint and gets a leaner to fall. Cowboys up two, about three and a half minutes in. A Chris Talkington here up top to Sam McBeth, finding Jeremy Smith for the finish. Big game for Smith, 16 points, five boards, and five assists. Under eight minutes left in the half, Nichols swinging it around the perimeter and feeding Trevon Lewis high post. He would slice down the lane for the bucket. Lewis scored 15 off the bench, Colonels up by one. Five minute mark, Shane Riolje guarding Dante Cannon, the back screen set by Deshar Guidry. Riolje shaken up, he'd be okay. Gidry with the tip in there. McNeese leads again. Tied at 21. Nichols gets the ball to Lewis on the block, out muscling the defender. He scores. Nichols shot just 36% in the half, but McNeese was held to 27%. Colonels up by two at the break. Both teams heating up, though, in the second half. Nobody was hotter than Sam McBeth. He knocks down the three here. Sam was shut out in the first half, but finished with 16 points. Under 13 minutes left, we're tied at 40. Daniel Richard here, no relation to Patrick, grabs a board, runs the floor, and gets a post feed, knocks down the turnaround. Cowboys back up. We had 13 lead changes. Less than three minutes to go. Nichols stretched the lead to five. Macbeth boarding the cannon miss, saves it from going out of bounds. The outlet down the floor from Brian Hammond to Lewis for the dunk. Colonel shot 74% after halftime. Their lead would grow to nine, but McNeese isn't done. 20 seconds left. Patrick Richard hits the three. That pulls McNeese within four points, but the Cowboys could not take advantage of two straight turnovers. Real Ye hits both of his free throws with four seconds left. Nichols up by five. McNeese cut it to four at the line, but Smith makes his foul shots. Kevin Hardy hits the three in the final seconds for the Cowboys, but that's all she wrote. The Colonels pull off the big upset, 78-75 to the final. That was the fifth conference win in the last six tries for the Colonels, and they did it rotating just seven players. A stunner of a different kind, though, this past Wednesday. The Demons of Northwestern State were reeling after five consecutive league losses. The Colonels were looking for another feather in their caps on the road. The Demons, though, were having absolutely none of it, and the Colonels were blown out the doors of Prather Coliseum. Nichols shot just 30% in the first half, while the Demons hit it a 57% clip, including a 7 of 11 mark from outside the arc. Nichols looked helpless in this one, just a string of uncharacteristic, unforced turnovers left Northwestern State salivating, and J.P. Piper, the head coach, was hot. Nichols was down 21 at the break and as many as 42 in the game. Trevon Lewis scored 16 points to go along with eight rebounds, two blocks, and four steals, but highlights were hard to come by in this one. William Mosley, fourth in NCAA history in block shots, gets two more in his final home game, including a monster block there. He scored 20 points, the Colonels falling 92-61. to However, with Texas State's loss to Lamar, Nichols indeed punched their ticket to the league tournament anyway. They stand at 10 and 18 overall, 6 and 9 in conference, heading into their regular season finale today. The Colonels host Southeastern Louisiana. Now, depending on the day's events, the Colonels will head to Katy, Texas as either the 7 or the 8 seed and will open up postseason play either way on Wednesday. The Colonel women's basketball team hosted McNeese last Saturday as Nichols attempted to tie the program record for victories in a season while solidifying their spot in the Southland standings. The Cowgirls came in riding a three-game winning streak with all the victories taking place on the road. Early on, McNeese's Ashlyn Baggett 
Air balls at three, but Martika Hull is there to clean up the mess. Hull with a career-high 20 points to go along with 14 rebounds. Three minutes in, Colonel's down two. Alicia Allen off the rebound, takes it up the floor, stopping and popping in the lane. She put up 16 points and eight boards. As a team, though, Nichols shot just 33%. KK Babin trying to split two defenders, nowhere to go. Kendra Wells takes it away. Wells with her second consecutive double-double. McNeese up 23-16. This time, Babin dishing to Jenny Nash. The baseline drive in the bucket. Nash with a dozen points. But that was a final field goal in the last seven minutes for the Colonels. They trailed 29-22 at the break. Second half, Nichols rallying. Babin gives it to Allen in the corner. She drives into the lane, pivots, and drains it. It's a one-point deficit with 15 minutes to go. The Cowgirls here making something out of nothing. They fumble it on the break, but Hull scoops it up and scores. McNeese up five inside of 13 minutes. Now down by seven, Nash misses on the dribble drive, but Allen collects the carom and scores it on the stick back. Colonels down by five with 11 minutes to go. But off a turnover, Caitlin Baguette ahead to uh, Ashley Salazar. She strikes from the deep corner. Nichols never got within six the rest of the way. They fall 61 to 49. But the Colonels would have a chance at redemption and an opportunity to clinch a spot in the Southland Conference Tournament this past Wednesday against Northwestern State. And they'd get to do it on senior night. Portia Washington, Jasmine Hoskins, and Summer Leslie all honored before the game. This moment had been a long time coming for Nichols since the arrival of Doobie, uh, Doobie Plaisance four years ago. The slogan has been Destination Katie. It's been the overriding goal of the club to qualify for the league tournament, setting a benchmark to begin to build upon. So here would be their chance on Wednesday at Stouffer Gym. Colonels coming out of the huddle here. Now they would win the opening tip. Summer Leslie out front to Leanne McCarthy finding Alicia Allen in the short corner. Allen was just getting started. She poured in a career high 30 points. Colonels up five, seven minutes in. Deandra Williams for the Lady Demons slicing through the defense, dishing to Jordy James for the open three. James scored a team high 24. She gave Northwestern State the lead about to three minutes later. Past the six minute mark, KK Babin controlling out front dribble drive and Allen finishes Nichols back in front 24-23. The advantage swinging back and forth. Final seconds of the half, Leslie with her team leading 73rd steal this season, but the Lady Demons take it right back. Renika Drake pokes it loose and Trudy Armstead lays it in. Armstead scored 22, Colonels down two at the break. Second half though, belongs to the Colonels. Leanne McCarthy knocks down the bonus ball. Nichols back in front, they hit five threes in the second half. Under 15 minutes to go, Jasmine Hoskins on the post feed, up and under. She scored 10 off the bench. The lead is up to seven. Northwestern State makes a run. Nowhere to go for Armstead in the high post, but she spots James for the long distance connection. We're tied at 51 with 13 minutes remaining. Took a little while here, but the Colonels pull away in the last five minutes. Summer Leslie finishing at the bucket on the third chance try. Summer with 15 points, seven boards, six steals. Colonels up by nine. Northwestern State would get no closer than five down the stretch. Nichols, how about this very businesslike celebrating in the end? They would do some more celebrating in the locker room. The Colonels are headed to Katy after the 86 to 78 victory. Our own Philip Boudreaux has much more on how the Colonels turn things around. Nichols Women's Basketball, a program that has struggled to achieve success for much of its existence, seeks to reverse that negative perception. The 2012 edition of the Colonels is on the verge of rewriting their own personal history book. Throughout the 37-year tenure of the program, the team never experienced a winning season. This year's victory total has already tied the program record with a chance to move above the 500 mark today. Prior to this campaign, the Colonels had only qualified for the Southland Conference Tournament three times, but they clinched a postseason berth with their victory over Northwestern State on Wednesday. Head coach Doobie Plaisance attributes their recent successes before the season even began. During the spring and summer, the women were very, very holistically committed to our uh, strength and conditioning program, and their attitudes uh, were what sort of indicated to me that we're going to have a special year this year because if they're busting their butt right now, 
uh, once we get in a gym and you know get to put on uniforms and start playing, uh, it's going to be a, a special year. The Colonel's preseason discipline foreshadowed the makings of a team that could turn around its previous misfortunes. In the second game of the season, the women defeated Louisiana Lafayette, snapping their five-game losing streak against them. Later in the campaign, the Colonels marched on to five consecutive victories, matching the program's longest winning streak since the 1998-99 season. Plaisance's premonitions transformed from dream into reality. This team is so very humble. And uh, in the game against uh, North Texas, which was a huge win for us, because North Texas went on to beat Alabama, which we almost beat Alabama first game of the season. So that was a great win for us. But Alicia Allen hit a, a, a three-quarter court shot at the buzzer at halftime. And that probably was a, a very special moment for me and the whole team that were just ignited. Senior Summer Leslie has emerged as one of the premier guards in the conference. She currently ranks in the top five in points, assists, and steals per game in the Southland. Sophomore KK Babin has drained 73 three-pointers, leaving her one shy of tying the Colonel's single season record. Junior Alicia Allen became the fourth player in Nichols history to surpass the 1,000 point career plateau. Leslie, Babbitt, and Allen all emerged as leaders of this squad. It all happens uh, prior, before the season. You know, you can't just start working hard during the season. It takes, uh, you know, hard work during the summertime, you know, focusing and, and knowing what you want before the season even starts. And my main focus was, you know, proving to myself what I know I was capable of doing. You just have to get your head right. Mostly, the most of the game is like confidence and it's really like what you think about yourself. So I just have to get my mindset right first coming off of last year because we kind of had some struggles and stuff. You know, your form, you've been growing up since you were a little kid. You knew how to make uh, layups. You knew how to make free throws. Kind of like threes are kind of the same thing for me. So I just have to get in the gym a little bit, but it's kind of mostly in my head. Scoring my 1,000 points, um, it just was an exciting feeling and um, I think it helped the team because I worked very hard and I came in and uh, we were able, I was able to achieve that. Working hard every day and just being able to be coachable and people can look up to me and you know I can make sure that we're doing things the right way. While Leslie, Babbitt, and Allen all took on pivotal roles to guarantee the Colonel's turnaround campaign, Plaisons also received contributions from an unexpected source. Jenny Nash. Jenny Nash is a, a freshman that we were able to pluck out of the, the great city of Houston, Texas. We had high expectations for her. She's a very cerebral player. She came in here and she worked her way into her starting role and she hasn't uh, given up that role yet, and she, she does a lot of the intangible things out there. In a tightly contested matchup against Stephen F. Austin, the women trailed with just seconds left. When Babin stole an inbounds pass and discovered a wide open Nash, all eyes were on Nash to erase their two point deficit. Certainly, when Jenny Nash hits that three, sort of seal the deal against. Stephen F. Austin. The 64-63 victory over the Lady Jacks marked the fourth in 42 tries against the conference powerhouse. The Colonel's vision of clinching the team's first postseason berth since 2005 edged closer to reality. Plaisance credits her big three for the program's 180 degree turn. We have great leadership uh, in uh, KK Babin, Summer Leslie, and Alicia Allen. They have uh, raised the bar and in terms of the, the standards that I have sort of bestowed on them and upholding those standards, and uh, I think that has been key. When Plaisance recruited Babin, the coach sold her on an opportunity to be a part of something greater than herself. Babin came to Nichols on a mission to instill a winning tradition for the women's basketball program, and she has played her part well. And I think people remember more of like, I mean, they remember a lot of the players, but they kind of like remember what you do and kind of like what you leave. And I really want to leave like, you know, that four years that, you know, KK came here, Summer came here, Alicia came here, like everybody that really like put an impact on this program. I really want them to be like, you know, that was the dream team. That's the team that we want to like mold ourselves around. This year's squad has laid the groundwork for the success of future teams. Their most recent victory against Northwestern State assured the Colonels a spot in the Southland Conference Tournament for the first time since 2005. The women wrap up the regular season today in Hammond versus Southeastern Louisiana. They'll compete in the Southland Tournament in Katy on Tuesday against an opponent to be determined. For this week in Nichols Athletics, I'm Philip Boudreaux.
Thank you very much, Philip. We're going to hit the links and the diamond when we come back. You're tuned in to This Week in Nichols Athletics, presented by State Farm Insurance. There goes Dwayne's car. There goes Dwayne's house. And there goes Dwayne. Man, that thing does not like Dwayne. State Farm's got you covered. In Thibodeau, call Jude Guidry. And in Homa, call Daryl Brew. Get to a better state. Oftentimes, teammates work directly in tandem in order to achieve victory. For the Nichols golf team, though, meeting their goals depends much more on their steady individual precision. Head coach James Schilling has high hopes for the coming spring season. With some smart scheduling, Schilling looks to avoid a repeat of the early struggles of the team's fall campaign. We had a somewhat inconsistent uh, fall semester. Um, we had one individual win. We had two uh, tournament uh, competitions that went really well for us out of four and then two that were kind of subpar uh, based on what I expected. We got off to a slow start over at, over at UTA in Arlington and then um, did we did progress throughout the semester. Uh, that slow start really really kind of hurt us uh, which was why I pushed back the beginning of the spring semester to give us some extra time to practice and be ready to hit the road immediately instead of starting you know uh, starting so soon. Already competing in a strong league, the Colonels realize that once they tee off, just one or two subpar results can knock them down the rankings far enough to take them out of the running for an NCAA postseason berth. Last year we were the high point. We were right around 163 in the nation. I think we finished around 181. Um, and there's, I think there's 300 and I don't know, around 320 Division One schools. So pretty competitive. Um, take out the. The poor tournaments that we have, and we'd be probably around, you know, 100 or so. So, but, uh, and that's basically the cutoff. If you can get around the top 100, that's what determines if you're going to get into postseason play with an at-large bid. But within the South and right now, we probably have six schools already within the top 100 in the nation. So, that just shows you how how competitive it is. I think it's it's reasonable for us to get uh, below 150. Very reasonable and then just kind of see where it goes from there. Maybe we can get hot at the end. Keep in mind, if you win the conference tournament, it doesn't matter what your ranking is, you go to regionals. Automatic bid, just like the other, the other sports that we have. A deep roster consisting of nine players should allow Schilling to go with the hottest hands week in and week out. Well, Christian Anderson uh, has been with us, been you know, kind of a team leader for us. Played really well, had some good individual finishes. Um, Andre Bjornsson is a first semester student that we have mid-year coming in for us and he'll be uh, in the starting rotation. Uh, Adrian Lesec is uh, also a player that we have in his second semester from France. Um, local kids we have Warland Prosperi from Homa. Jess Daze is a, a sophomore from uh, Donaldsonville. Tanner Manuel is, uh, is another player that we have from Morgan City. And uh, we also have some other players. Peter Pe Peterson is a transfer from Coastal. Carolina and is on the team and um, uh, you know I just I feel I feel pretty confident with our group uh, Florentino Molina is another player that's a, a junior college player that we have on the team as well so I think overall we you know we have a pretty good group we're very capable but we just have to be more, more consistent. Schilling will rely most heavily on Anderson a sophomore who has had success with the Colonels. Since I got here I have won three tournaments one tournament each semester and I've improved my average score, dropped that score at least two strokes. Uh, before I got here it was probably somewhere around 74, 74.3 or something and right now it's around 72. While Anderson hopes to keep the momentum of a strong fall intact, he'll have to get healthy first. 
my main goal is to get my shoulder back on track. I, I come from Iceland and everything was covered in snow and it was really icy. So when I was walking outside, I slipped on ice and I was trying to save myself like by landing on the hands, but my right, right hand landed on another ice shelf and just slipped under me. And that caused uh, something called AC spray. But as soon as my shoulders are good, I can start playing good again. And I just want to perform better than last semester. Like I finished last semester really strong, played really good, and I want to start this semester like I finished the last one. And hopefully keep that through the whole semester. Christian will obviously be a key factor for the team, but Schilling knows it will take a lot of team effort to qualify for the postseason. I would think overall, we, we've proven as a team with the core players that we have, we're capable of winning. What's hurt us over the throughout the past couple of years with this core group that I have is we really haven't um, been as consistent as I would like. In other words, whenever we have an off week or an off tournament, you know, we should ev even if we're not playing our best, we should always be in the upper half. Okay, so if you've got 20 teams, we should be 10th or better. And we haven't always done that. Whenever we're playing well, we can play with anyone. But ultimately, you know, you're judged by the whole year, not just one or two tournaments. So wins are great, but ultimately you want to be consistent throughout the whole year. We just didn't do that in the fall. We would be higher ranked nationally and within the conference. Hopefully the extra practice pays off in making the Colonels a more consistent club and postseason contender. Nichols opens the spring season at the Sanford Invitational this Sunday and Monday at the Hoover Country Club in Alabama. For this week in Nichols Athletics, I'm Ashley Bull. Thanks, Ashley. Nichols Baseball is on deck on This Week in Nichols Athletics, presented by State Farm Insurance. There goes Dwayne's car. There goes Dwayne's house. And there goes Dwayne. Man, that thing does not like Dwayne. State Farm's got you covered. In Lockport, call James Matassa. And in Homa, call Renee Carricker. Get to a better state. The Nichols baseball team hosted Stony Brook and Alabama State in the Colonel Round Robin last weekend. The Colonels started off the year nicely with an opening day win over nationally ranked Southern Miss. They followed that, that up with a win over SWAC, Western Division favorite Southern in Nichols home opener. So hopes were high entering the three-team event at DDA Field, but the defense brought Nichols down. The opening game last Friday against Stony Brook, the defending America East champs Seth Webster on the hill for the Colonels. The Seawolves produce a run in the first, top second now, and Michael Roaring single up the middle. Kevin Courtney and Kevin Krause come home. The Colonels are down a three spot. Stony Brook would add an unearned run in the fifth. Then preseason All-American Travis Jankowski delivers a two-run triple. The ball gets away on the relay throw here and Jankowski goes all the way around the bases. Nichols down six nothing. Webster was done after the inning. He allows eight hits and seven runs, only two of which were earned. Now the Colonels would start a comeback. Bottom half of the six, two on and two out, and Michael LaGrange facing freshman All-American Brandon McNitt. LaGrange drives in Blake Bazeron and Bo Falk with a double off the right field wall. It's 8-2 Stony Brook after six. Now the Wolves would add a run in the top of the seventh. LaGrange facing Brian Tatelman in the home half of the frame. Another two-bagger. Chasing in Bazeron and Falk, LaGrange with four hits and four batted in on the night. Nichols scores four in the seventh to make it interesting. It's eight to six now after this play. The Colonels with another shot in the eighth. Two men in scoring position, one out. Jasbeer Rocker gets Ray Ureste going after the high heat. He faces the minimum number of batters over two innings, fanning four, getting Jeremy Hill on strikes to end the threat in the eighth. Four errors by the Colonels though leading to five unearned runs, and Nichols falls 8-6. to six. 
Colonels looking to bounce back on Saturday against previously winless Alabama State. They get another quality start, this time from lefty Patrick Shreve. Again, though, the defense was costly. Top of the first, Richard Gonzalez with the RBI hit, scoring Valderon Estrada and a two-run inning for the Hornets puts them out in front. Now the Colonels would counter punch. Bo Falk coming up here at the bat with a sharply hit grounder off of Emmanuel Marrero's glove. That single plates Ray Ureste Nichols with a three run frame, but they wind up giving it away in the fifth. Leo Rojas singling to right field and it would get by Michael Lagrange. Inier Munoz scores. Rojas ends up at third, two unearned runs in the inning, giving Alabama State a 4-3 advantage. Now the teams would train runs in the six. Blake Bajeron, no colonel at homer all year long, but he would go deep off of TJ Renda here. But turns out to be not enough. Renda with a complete game victory. He fanned eight nickels on the short end of the 6-4 score, despite the long ball from Blake Bajeron. Now the colonels would come back on Sunday for a rematch with Stony Brook hoping for a better outcome this time around, and they would get off to a promising start. We take you to Didier Field on Sunday, bottom half of the first inning, Jeremy Hill facing James Campbell. And Hill with a ground out here scoring Matt Richard. It's one to nothing Nichols, and that's Hill's fifth RBI on the season. Now Stony Brook ties it in the second, Cole Perigine reaching here on a Ray Ureste error, and it was a tough week for the normally short-handed uh, Ray Ureste had been so great defensively during his freshman campaign. Max Tissenbaum scoring the tying run here. The Wolves played two more in the fourth. Perigine with the RBI single to right, chasing home Tanner Nibbins. The overthrow coming up allows Perigine to advance to second. Next batter up for Stony Brook, Sal Intagliata. And he would poke one through the wickets of Ureste. Perigine scores. It's a 3-1 to one Colonel deficit. Campbell, meanwhile, put the Nichols bats on ice. He allows just two hits in seven innings, fanning Bo Falk here, coming up to end a threat in the sixth, and Stony Brook wins by a final of four to one. Now the Colonels got back on the right track during midweek play, hosting LSU Alexandria on Tuesday night. Nichols got a solid start from Corey DeLang and put up a, cro a couple of crooked numbers too. First batter of the night here, DeLang facing Kenny Hudson, and Corey gets the call on the payoff pitch. DeLang worked six and two third innings. He gave up three runs on five hits with no walks and six Ks, and he got the support that he needed. Bottom of the third, Nichols up one nothing. Hudson can't quite catch up with Matt Richard's fly ball. Mike Barbas scores. It's a triple for Richard. Nichols up two, second three bagger of the year for Richard, and his first run batted in as a colonel. Next man up is Phillip Lyons. He pokes it through the infield, plating Richard. Nichols scores three in the third, one in the fifth, and three more in the sixth. The Generals got a three spot in the seventh, but that was it. The Colonels break the short skid. They win by a final of seven to three. And playing again on Wednesday, they wind up with a four-run six to pull ahead of Alcorn State in Jackson, and they defeat the SWAC champs by a final of nine to two. That's going to do it for this week in Nichols Athletics, presented by State Farm Insurance. We'll talk to you again soon. Today's show has been brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state with State Farm Insurance. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.